What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. <laughs> and tonight! Tonight! I had to make sure my ears were staying in. Alright, we're coming back to the Arctic Monkeys. Yes, indeed. Arctic Monkeys fans, feeling you! Come on now! Here we go. This is a request from Jasper Brokaw, Luke Hodgkinson, okay... Yeah, Hodgkinson, uh, Melody Heslop, and CM17. They all want to see me react to this. Now, from what I understand, this is a twofer. So you're you're doubling up on this one. So yeah, we gotta we gotta double up on that for sure. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Yep, we gotta double up on it. So uh, the Arctic Monkeys performing the songs plural. When the sun goes down and Brian storms. Is that nah? That can't be right. Say what? Is it really, is it really Brian Storms? Time out. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's Brian Storm. Huh. That's what, that's what the title of the video says. I had to double check, but yeah, Brian Storm. Okay. So there we go. When the Sun Goes Down and Brian Storm. Now, to the best of my knowledge, I have not heard either of these songs before. They do not resonate with me. It does not strike a bell. So, as far as I know, I've never heard either one of these. However, there is always a chance I may have heard this before and I just don't know it. So, as always, if I start listening to the song and I go, oh, wait a second, I know this song, I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This was posted by Cats three knower or cats a knower. I, maybe the three is supposed to be an E. You hacker wannabes, you. Yeah, cats three N O H R. Anyway, uh, and the video has 8.87 million views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Arctic Monkeys, When the Sun Goes Down, Brian Storm. Cool. Uh, for what I, oh, this is this is Glastonbury, isn't it? Okay, got to be careful. Uh, from what I understand, they, were, like, they released a debut album in like 2006. Their debut album. And then in 2007, they were headlining this, this festival. And this is one of the bigger festivals in the world, so... To be able to go from your debut album to headlining a festival of this magnitude, that's impressive. That's very impressive. Anyway, all right, let's do this. <clears throat> all right, boy, let's do this. Street. 
She did two major credit cards, I doubt she just receives us all not quite legitimate. At that part, at that part, <laughs> let me try that again. At that point, the lead singer should just look at the crowd and go, you know what, I'm going to take the night off. You guys sing the entire concert because you guys are being loud as hell. So that's cool, man. <laughs> I love that feeling. I, I love it when I'm up on stage and we're playing our songs and it doesn't matter where we are. It doesn't matter what part of the world we're in. Um, we'll be up on stage and the crowd is singing our song back to us in perfect English. It doesn't matter where we are. We could be in Russia. We could be in Poland. We could be in Germany. Um, we could be in Brazil. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter where we are. France, Spain, it doesn't matter. Um, to hear your song, your lyrics, your words being sung back to you, there is no greater feeling in the world. There really is isn't it is just a phenomenal feeling and i'll bet you anything that guy that lead singer right now is feeling that he's, he's probably going holy cow <laughs> especially since they're a fairly new band at this point like i said they released their debut album a year before this festival so to have that type of crowd participation with zero prompting zero leading just he just stopped singing and the crowd was right there i mean they were singing with him from the get-go so he backed off the mic and to really see what they can do, and they all stepped up. That's pretty dope. That is pretty dope. It's a great feeling, man. For those of you that have never been in a band, I'm sorry. I I'm really sorry that you you will never be able to experience that feeling. That is that is better than anything, man. It really is. More seductive than sex. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> Keep it on the inside. He's just Nice warning. Thanks for the heads up there. <laughs> uh, I love that riff. The, 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 I love what the guitar player and the bass are doing. Or the guitars, plural, and the bass are doing. They're playing that, They're playing against the, the four. So the, the, four, the, the, the drummer's playing a straight ahead four field. And the guitar players and the drummer are uh, the guitar players and the bass player are doing this da 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 Oh, 
That drummer, that drummer with those snare fills are tight, dear Lord. Every single one of them is crisp and clean. No dragging, no rushing, just right on, and it comes right out of the fill into the next part. Very seamless, very tight, very clean fills overall. Very impressive work from that drummer, man. Really impressive. On the snare too. It's not even like it's not even like he's moving in there on the toms, you know, giving himself some freedom. No, he's staying right on that snare, which can be merciless, by the way. When you're not when you're moving from drum to drum, then you're going tom rolls, like you know, high tom, middle tom, floor tom. You know, you have some movement. You can hide a lot in that movement. You can you can hide little flubs in the movement. When you stay on one tom and do the whole fill on the one time, it's merciless. It's even more merciless on that snare. That snare is completely unforgiving. You mess up in the slightest little bit on the snare, it's going to be far more noticeable than you do on toms. So, smooth, tight work on that snare. Really impressive. Let's keep going. Can see it in his eyes yet, and he's got a nasty plan. I hope you're not involved at all. Saw some cans of beverages next to the drummer's feet. Those must be energy drinks. Holy cow. <laughs> Where did that come from? They laid out, they, they faded out, and then he just, no warning, no count off. That's why you have in-ears, because the in-ears, there, there's, a, there's a track that's clicking you off. It'll actually, it, it depends on the band. Like, we use, we actually have a countdown. it will be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bye. And then we start. So he may have had that countdown in his ears, but as they were fading out, the countdown starts. Pow! He just goes right into it. No click off, no warning, no nothing. Just right into it. Very sudden, but very effective. Especially with how clean he did it. This drummer, man. Who is this guy? Who is this drummer? Someone tell me in the comments. I need to look him up because... I'm impressed by him right now. Like, seriously impressed by him. Anyway, let, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going here. And I have. Okay. 
The bass had a solo line. I, I don't know if I would really call it a solo line. I mean, it, it kind of was a little bit of a spotlight for him because everybody else laid out except for him and the drums. Um, this is one of the reasons I don't like playing with a pick. Um, I, I much prefer using my fingers. Um, it sounds like his pick kind of got hung up on the string in a couple places. Like, he's trying to play really fast. You know, he's trying to play those... those uh, so it's it's okay so there are there are 16th notes but the, the fast tempo one two three four yeah that's fast trying to play that with a pick man whoo i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be tough <laughs> and if your pick gets hung up on the string uh it's it's gonna be noticeable um, especially when the drummer is playing as tight as he is and as accurate as he is and right on each and every single 16th note like he is doing, the bass player's flubs are a little more obvious. <laughs> so I, I feel bad for the bass player. I do. I, I, I've been there, man. I've been there where I've had to play that fast with a pick and the band I was working for insisted I play with a pick. So, hey, they're paying me. So I'm going to do whatever it is they want me to do. But man, playing with a pick that fast is a pain in the butt. It really is, because you can get hung up on those strings. It sucks, and he did. He actually got hung up twice, so I feel bad for him. I do, but you know what? You know what he did not do? He didn't stop, and that shows a testament to his professionalism. He messed up. He knows he messed up, but he kept going and pretended like nothing happened, and like I said, and most people... Like, most people don't know the first thing about playing music that are in that crowd. Most people don't know the first thing about playing a musical instrument. They probably didn't even notice. So, that's smart. It's good. That's good professionalism. That's good stage professionalism. Good job. The show must go on. So, good job. Good job to the bass player for that. breakdown there great little breakdown uh everybody kind of laid out instrumentally except the drums laying the vocals have a chance to kind of show which is nice um i know we're into the second song between the two i don't know which one i like better i like the energy of this one better but i think i like the melodic styling of the first one better i don't know i have to think about that anyway all right we got well, it says 35. I just backed up 10 seconds. We got 45 seconds. It's, it's end strong. Let's go. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the rehearsal. It's a rehearsal. <laughs> I'm assuming that was the beginning of the show. I, I get the feeling that was the beginning of the show. They had that intro track and everything. This is a great way to start. Great way to start. So, very nice job. Well, there you go, folks. That was Arctic Monkeys with uh, When the Sun Goes Down and Brian Storm. All right. Uh, that was a request from Jasper Brokaw. 
Luke Hodgkinson, Melody Heslop, and CM17. All right. That was fun. I mean, that was... It was fun to watch. Uh, it, it was fun to listen to. It was just a fun experience overall. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that an 8.4. Yep, 8.4. I feel good with that score. Let me tell you why. Why? If I'm being 100% honest, and you know I am, <laughs> uh, the stage presence the the live show the visual was not all that super impressive if i'm being 100% honest okay having said that uh musically the musical performance they more than delivered on um the first song had a great groove and great melodic uh work within the vocal lines and within the in the guitars too um I mean, there was a lot of great things happening in that first song from a melodic standpoint, from a chordal standpoint. The second song was more about energy and more about drumming more than anything else. That drummer boy, I I really hope you guys let me know who he is in the comments because I, I, I need to look him up because he is a rock solid drummer. Uh, and that was obvious. I mean, don't get me wrong. The first song showed him off pretty well too, but the second song really showed him off and what he's capable of doing because he was rock solid through the entire song. Um, no, I, I, I liked the feel of the second song more. I liked the energy of the second song more, but I liked the her, I like the chordal structure and the melodic structure of the first song more. So kind of a trade-off. Nonetheless, from what I understand, this was actually the first two songs of their set when they were playing at this concert. And I don't know what the rest of their set list looks like. I don't know what the rest of their songs sound like. But I will say this, these two songs they picked were great show openers. This was a great way to start a show. Um, when you start a show, you want to start off one of two ways. You want to start off with something that is going to grab them by the throat, slam them against the back of the wall, and hold on for dear life while you push through the first couple songs. Or, you want to start off with a fun song that everybody knows and everybody can sing along to and everybody can really get into. And they went with the latter. They went with the second one. And I think for a band like this, that's very fitting. You know, and then they went into a song, the second song really kind of took off and, you know, punched them right in the gut. So, a great way to start the show. I, I I don't know if they could have picked a better song because I don't know what the rest of the song sounded like. But I will say, these two songs, not a bad way to start at all. This was a great start to a, a great way to start a live show. Um, vocally, um, the lead vocalist did a fine job. He, he, did, a, he did a great job. The, as far as backing vocals go, I, I mean, I could hear it, but I couldn't really hear it. You know, it, nothing stood out. And I can't knock it for that, and I, I can't take all points for that because nothing did stand out. Nothing sounded bad. It all sounded good. It sounded well blended. Everything kind of blended together. So I can only assume that the backing vocalists did their job. I, I can only assume they did. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm assuming they did because, like I said, nothing stuck out. Um... I mentioned the bass player. For the most part, I, I would say 99% of what he did sounded really good. Really good. I, I, I could actually hear the bass clear as a bell through both songs. Like I said, there was that one solo spot where he had those two little flubs. He was, listen, he's playing super fast 16th notes with a pick. And if I'm not mistaken, he was trying to do all downstrokes. That is tough, man. That is hard. Playing that fast with all downstrokes. There's a chance that your pick, your pick is going to get hung up on a string on, on an upstroke. And I heard that happen twice on that one part. Now, the next part, instead of doing 16 notes, he did 8 notes. All downstroke 8 notes. And that sounded clean. I loved that part. That part sounded really good. Um, it happens, you know. But what, what really impressed me was he kept going. He didn't, he didn't fall into the quicksand trap that a lot of other musicians will. A lot of musicians will fall into that quicksand trap. They'll make one mistake. And up here, they'll dwell on it, and it'll bug them. And it'll bug them so much 
it distracts them, it takes their mind off what they're supposed to be doing, and the next thing they know, they make another mistake. And now they got two mistakes to dwell on, and then they make another mistake because they're dwelling on those two, now three, which leads to a fourth mistake. And it's a quicksand trap, man. The more, the more you fight it, the more you dwell on it, the deeper and deeper and deeper you get. He didn't do that. He made the couple little mistakes, and he said, okay, well, it happened. And he's right, it happens. I have never in my life played a perfect show. I have always made at least one mistake. Every show, guaranteed. Um, it happens, and there's really nothing you can do about it <laughs> other than move on and move forward. And he did. I didn't hear any of the mistakes the rest of that, rest of that song, so fantastic job on the bass player's part. Um, now, overall, this was fun. I, I got to give a lot of props to the drummer. The drummer is really what kind of carried this for me. I mean, I was really entertained by that drummer. Everybody else did a fine job. Don't get me wrong. Everybody else did a great job. But the drummer is really what kind of took everything over the top for me. And one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why they went up into the 8.4s to get a great score. And remember, if you're not 100% sure about my scoring system, look down below in the comment, in, in the, not the comments, in the description, you'll find my scoring chart down there. You will see 8.0 is the bottom threshold for great. So an 8.4 is like right in the middle of great. It's, it's a really, really great job. I, I enjoyed it. I loved watching it. It was fun. So 8.4, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It'll do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you updated on everything happening with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.